Hi everybody, here's Christian. Welcome to our Pico 8 Hero tutorial. And we are still doing the Breakout Clone. The beautiful Breakout Clone. Hero 1, so far, is this the name of the, our file. Uh, but before we begin, uh, I wanted to address a comment that we had recently on, our, on, on episode number 8, way back. Uh, that comment was about... So, so now our program is getting really long. It's getting really long, right? So when we now, um, let me load this up. So when we go through this, right, there's like a lot of text to scroll through and it gets, it's very easy to get lost. It's very easy for me to just type something in a function and you guys maybe don't quite, don't quite see. Uh, and maybe then you, you make some mistake. Maybe you, there's like an if statement where you forget the end, for example. And then it's very difficult to fix this because there's just so much text that fits on the screen at any given point. So what can we do about this? There's two things I want to show you. Two things. One thing is you can, when you go folder, and you don't see this now, but now it opens like a Explorer window with all the folders, uh, with a folder where all my cards are in. And now here are the Pico 8 files, the P8 files. I can open uh, those files in any other text editor and code in any other text editor. And so you can use whatever you want. For example, here I have, I have to show you, uh, this is our program in Notepad++, right? This is Notepad++. It's a really nice editor. You probably should have Notepad++ installed on your PC. Uh, and it has, um, here you can have like different high tech, um, syntax highlighting. So I just put on syntax highlighting for Lua and you kind of see the code here as well. And you can, of course, this window is very small, so you can see it on a screen in the, in the stream, in this little box. Uh, but you can make it whatever, however big you want. So this is one, one option. Another option I would also recommend is to look up, um, so to do this, to do this kind of like editing in a, in a text editor. Another thing I would recommend is to use um, Sublime Text. Sublime Text. Sublime Text, there we go, Sublime Text. There's a Sublime Text plugin. Um, I, I'm thinking it's called just Pico 8 plugin. Just Google this one, uh, and it this is a really good text editor for coding Sublime Text that is multi-platform. And you there's a really neat Pico 8 plugin that looks exactly like the like this, like the editor of Pico 8, but it's bigger. So there's like more that fits on your screen. So if you're getting lost, that's an easy way to deal with this problem. Another um, easy way to deal with this problem is to be a bit more. Um, how do I say disciplined with the way you format things? That's something I see a lot with people who start coding. They see something like this and they go like, um, they code differently. They, they don't, don't see the structure that is happening here. Um, for example, this kind of stuff, right? So they, their code would look like this. You just type in the words, they focus on the words that I'm typing in, but not at the in intents, intents, indents. The thing that where is, you know, like, this if statement is one space further down to the right. This is two spaces. This is one space. This is two spaces. This is one space. This is two spaces. This is one space. The spaces are ignored by the program, but they help you structure the program visually for you, for your eyes. So you see that this if statement is inside this function because it's intended a little bit, indented, indented, intended. <laughs> I always get those two words confused. Um, so yeah, there's like, it's it's one line inside. And then we know that this is inside the if statement because it's like one line inside. And this kind of structure, this kind of um, writing, this kind of um, formatting helps a lot with finding those kind of stray ends that you maybe forgotten or maybe multiple ends. Um, stuff like that. Um, so I want you to focus when you're new to programming and not doing this, I want you to focus on this. This is very important to get a hang of it. In Pico 8, it's not as extreme as, as it's in programming, like uh, other programming languages. For example, if you go back to the, to the Notepad++, you see that these are like really way in, in, intended, indented. No, actually they aren't. This is also one space. Uh, but if you have other programming languages, it's like a tab. You always press a tab. And this tab is like really big space, so you can see like those really big gaps, which helps you parse things visually. And this kind of leads into general certain insights that you should have or that you should think about, about programming, what programming means. You always think 
that programming <clears throat> the programming is something you do for the computer to understand your program right you write a program so a computer understands the program that you have in your head right you have an idea and a com you're trying to translate the idea for the computer but there is a different way to think about this this is i'm not saying that this is wrong but there's a different perspective as well the computer doesn't really care about what the program looks like the computer can just can digest like really crazy stuff like just a, a stream of zeros and, and ones that would be completely uncomprehensible for a human being most programming languages are actually not made for computers they are made for humans so in, in kind of way they are meant for humans to understand computers to talk to computers and so good coding is not so much about making the code understandable for the computer but it's about making the code understandable for the person who's reading it for the person who's coding it for the person who maybe like after it's coded is reviewing the code because they want to make changes stuff like that so um get into the habit of formatting your code code neatly and also maybe commentating it and we have been doing this because i'm commentating is as i do it on on youtube uh, but yeah, just making sure the code is readable for human beings. That is your, your biggest priority. Uh, von ben, Bednar is asking if there is a Pico 8 syntax highlighting uh, and UI theme for Atom. I haven't about, heard about it. I heard that Atom is a really cool um, text editor as well. Uh, but I haven't heard about it, so you have to find it yourself. I'm pretty sure they have at least a Lua syntax highlighting. And so you can use that as well. Uh, another thing I also wanted to mention, uh, just some uh, shop, uh, um, shopkeeping, not shopkeeping, housekeeping, is that I have to apologize for the very long videos that we had recently. Uh, this time around, I have a uh, stopwatch running around, running uh, at the same time. Uh, please let me know in the comment section what kind of length uh, you're you're going for. So, uh, what kind of length you would r wish I would go for? Uh, because I'm not really sure where I settled at. I was going for like 20 minutes to half an hour. So if it's longer than half an hour, I get like really, really um, nervous. But maybe that's okay to have longer things. Just let me know what you think. Uh, von Bednar, I, I misread von Bednar's comment, by the way. It's, he's not asking if there is an Atom theme. He's stating that there is an Atom theme. Thank you very much. So you can use also Atom. Atom is really cool. Good. <clears throat> so we had last time around, we had this, these goals here. And today I want to do, address the first of our goals, just walk down the list of features that we uh, wrote down here. So today I want to do the sticky paddle. The sticky paddle. Which means when we serve the ball, the ball ju doesn't just come fly in from nowhere and you're like, whoa, what's happening? But the ball actually starts on the paddle and you can press a button and you can launch the ball into space. Um, there, there's multiple advantages to this. Let me show you something like this is now gameplay, um, game design stuff. If I play this right like this, you can see that I don't actually have to move my paddle too much because the ball always comes back in the middle. And it always goes into the edges, like the, the, the whole thing is eaten out from, from the edges. Now I have to move a little bit. Um, and I'm not really hitting anything in the middle here. And that's that's kind of bad. Um, so me, uh, us um, starting the, the ball differently allows us to break up this pattern. Uh, a person who plays the game is allowed to um, their very first decisions where they launch the ball is already would change the way this, this video this um, this game will play out it adds more variation to our game it adds more variety to our game right now it's kind of like this very on the rails kind of experience and allowing us to launch the ball at any given place adds more variety it also uh, solves the problem that maybe the ball will eventually get stuck in some kind of weird loop and never reach a certain block that could happen th theoretically. So in this case, you could always lose the ball and make it respawn and then make it sh shoot it somewhere um, so that you definitely hit that kind of um, cluster there. Zelfer says, uh, looks like there's a Pico 8 plugin for Vim 2. Yes, there is a Vim plugin as well. Uh, but Note Web++ only has the standard Lua syntax highlighting. Yeah, but usually with Lua you get far anyway. Like. Um, Pico 8 is not like Pico 8 Lua is not that different from standard Lua, so just Lua is, is, is going to be fine. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I, the, the thing is, I wouldn't recommend Vim for beginners. It's kind of, um, hmm. it's, it's challenging. Uh, I think Atom or, or um, Sublime Text are way better for beginners. Okay, let me let me let me uh, click this away. Good. So how are we going to do the sticky paddle that we're going to deal with today? Um, so I'm not exactly sure to be honest, but um, here are some thoughts I have. Here are some thoughts I have. How about we're going to try the following? How about we're going to go like sticky equals true at the beginning. When you start a new game and there's going to be like just a sticky equals uh, true or false variable and if it's um, true then it means that the, the ball will, mo will move with a pedal if it's false the ball will follow the trajectory the way we had it before so we're going to add like the sticky variable here and let me think about it first of all uh when we serve a ball we sh i think we should um it's going to be a bit duplicate but we're going to go sticky equals true and then I think the ball dx, dy should certainly be minus one and one, so it shoots uh, upwards, not downwards. And ball x should be pad x, so we should we want to put the, the ball already at the pad, pad x um, plus pad width divided by two plus um, actually, yes, plus and minus. Um, no, actually, that's it. That's already it. I, I want to add a floor here. Um, just so we don't have comma values. I don't like our, our um, ball to be at um, comma values. Not just yet. Maybe later on we're going to do this. And then um, then we're going to go at the ball y. We're going to go pad y. Um, no, uh, yeah, pad y minus ball r so uh, half a radius no it's half a diameter of of the ball above the top edge of the pedal and i'm going to actually copy this because we're gonna we're gonna need this later on when we update the game so let me scroll down to update game there we go here's where we're controlling things and here is where we're doing collision detection with the ball right so if if sticky then and we're gonna do something else otherwise and then here's where we start um, our regular ball physics this is ball physics regular ball f physics And then I'm spending some time here, as you can see, to do the in indents. Intense. I have to have to look it up how do you spell it. Um, so I know, so we know exactly what is inside what. And no, it's not 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 finished yet. There is some more, but wait, there is more. Is it over? It's not. No, it's not over yet. Then this and this. And this is game over for the ball. That's also cool. Okay. Very big if statement. All of this stuff is inside the else of the of the of the sticky. Um, right. Let's try this. Ha! It works. I would maybe put the ball a little bit higher. Right now, it's kind of like merged into the indents. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, von Bender. Um, right, so I'm gonna get minus one additionally. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. See, now it's 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 more. It seems more separate from the from the pedal. 
this is good. I like this. This is something I enjoy. So now we need to add another additional thing where you can fire the ball into space when you press a button. Um, there is one little detail that I'm going to have to deal with in a second here where it would be nice if it can control if you can shoot the ball left or right. Um, but I'm not going to worry about this just now. So let me see. If sticky and ball uh, and btn um, so this is where we're checking if this sticky is true and if, if button was pressed then and let me see real quick again doing the advertisement for these things i'm handing these out to my students now they're really excited about these things they are really useful um, I'm gonna go with four. I think this is the the A button, uh, the X button. I'm not sure. I maybe mis uh, confusing X and and uh, and Y, uh, but that's something that we can deal with later on when when things are. I just 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 want to think this thing to react to any kind of um, button presses. In this case, we're gonna uh, if sticky is button four, then we're gonna sticky equals false. Ah, oh, something's not not good. Right. The problem is that ha, this is a funny thing. Um, I think the problem is that when we're here, we have to press a button. So we press the button, and now the button is still pressed, so to speak, when the game begins. That's not good. We want to kind of wait until the button is released, and then wait for another press. And there is a function for this. So it's there is a so there's two functions when you look at this. Uh, right here, I'm gonna make the camera focus. So there is BTN. But there is also BTN P. BTN is true all the time when a button is pressed. Every frame in which a button is pressed, BTN will return true. BTN P will return only true in the one frame that the button was pressed for the first time. Huh. So, so see, now it's... When I lose the ball, the ball reappears on top of the pad. And I can launch it again. So already this is doing exactly what we what we, what we wanted. Von Bender is asking where do I teach? At multiple universities. Um, most of the time at the Cologne Game Lab in Cologne. Because that's why it's called Cologne Game Lab, which is part of the university in, in Cologne. Uh, but I'm also teaching at the Berufsakademie BM in Cologne, which is kind of like a private, um, not a university, but more like a... Um, I'm not exactly sure how to translate this in, in English. Uh, but they kind of like um, teach people um, um, professions. So it's kind of like, I don't know, I'm not really versed in like different terms for different schools, but it's kind of like, um, yeah, I'm teaching also uh, upcoming game designers. Uh, four is Z on keyboard. X. So yeah, so this is good. I wanted to, I wanted to use X. Good. There's a different, there's a, an extra added layer of difficulty because I'm using a German keyboard and the German keyboard, keyboard the Z is the Y. So that makes it uh, even even less, uh, even more problematic. Right, so now if I press here, I can, I can hit the middle part. And now the game is a bit more varied. Trade school? Maybe, maybe trade school, yeah, maybe trade school is the right term for this. Um, so I'm enjoying what I'm seeing. It's, it's some some really good gameplay here right now. Some really mellow stuff. Something I wanted to add additionally. We're almost at the end of the episode. Yes, I wanted to add this thing where right now we're not really sure in which direction the uh, the ball will fire. Um, so I want to add like a little preview showing which di uh, direction the ball will go. Um, let me think about this. How are we going to deal with this? So let's go with another variable here. So sticky true for generally if a sticky is true. And let's go like... Um, or maybe, maybe we don't need a variable here. Maybe, maybe it's okay. Maybe let's try something like this. 
So do you know, do you see how the ball X, DX and ball DY, these are the things that decide um, in which direction um, the, the ball will fly once you serve it, once you, you start it. So something we can do here right now is when, see what, when, we, um, when you press left or right, uh, we're gonna check if sticky. So just if sticky is true, then uh, we, so zero is going to is is the left. We're going is pr pressing the left button. So if sticky is is true, then we're gonna set the dx to minus one. So it will the ball will launch into to the left side once you launch it. And then here we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna put it to one. So right now, oops. So right now, when I start this and I, I just press X, it will launch in this direction, right? But if I go left first, then it will launch in this direction. There's only one problem with that. We don't really see as a player, we don't really see that anything changes. So it would be nice to have like a little arrow pointing you, giving you like a preview of where the, where the ball will go. So I'm gonna add this little arrow now. Um, so we're gonna do this when we draw things, draw bricks, there we go. Uh, draw game, this is our ball. And so here we're gonna go if sticky, then. Um, we're gonna call it launch or serve preview. Pre uh, preview. Pre V V view. Um, so let me think about how best to do this. Um, it's going to be probably a line. And the, again, we're getting this thing line. Uh, there is a center point. Let, for now, let's go with ball X. Ball Y. Oops. Come on, man. I have two mouse here. <laughs> Um, but why and yeah, and then just the two other points, the, the destination points. So we're going to go ball X plus, um, ball underscore DX, DX times five. So this is basically, we're going giving a preview of what happens if we move the ball five frames. And the same with dy. Right. And then, oh, oh yeah, and then we have to also have like a color which is going to be ten, 10 for us. Let's try this. There should be like a little arrow. Yeah, we have a little preview going on here. Um, I don't like how it kind of messes with our ball, with the actual ball. So let me see if we can. Uh, make the the line distinct from the actual ball. So in order to do this, we need to basically use the same function here as a starting point. So let me see if we can fix this. So we're gonna go like this. And we're gonna start at like four. Let's go with four and um, four. And then this is gonna be a bit further away. Let's go with six. Basically, the two numbers are deciding where the line starts. And yeah, there we go. It would be nice if it was animated. I would like to, if it was like blip, 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 tick, 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 you know. Hmm. Also, it would be nice if this was an actual arrow. That would be also nice. Hmm. You know what? I'm not going to overdo this. Not at this point. We just want to have some basic functionality and there's probably some very much important. Um, wait a minute. Uh, there is also the, the arrow button graphic in Pico 8 as, a, as under shift. L and shift R. You can animate it when you have the topic about juiciness. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, we're going to probably add some juiciness at some point. Yeah, so that might be a good idea to add to to, uh, to our juiciness topic. Um, 
let me let me ch check out the the arrows that he's talking about. Oh yeah, yeah, these arrows. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. So I'm gonna. So so while we have like this thing for us, remember, I'm gonna actually write this down in our to-do list. So we want to have particles. We want to have screen shake. And we want to have arrow arrow animation. Arrow arrow anim. I also want to have some uh, blinking. Uh, text blinking specifically there's like you know when you have to press a button i want to have like more blinking stuff so people know that the program's actually running and, and waiting so this is going to be a big topic all right so uh kind of like a uh, nice and, and firm uh, episode i would say that uh, we are 23 minutes so again let me know what kind of length of episodes on on youtube guys let me know what kind of length of episodes you think are cool here but it seems like our game is getting better every day uh, so on the next episode, we are going to deal with the problem of angle control. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to deal with this myself. I have to think about this. Um, yeah, see you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.